My name is Carsten Vogt. I'm a professor of Cologne University of Applied Sciences in Germany and I will speak about events and the UI thread in Android. So what will we do in this lesson? We will learn about events and event-driven programming in general. We will learn about the same subjects in Android and see the central role of the UI thread. And we will learn about a fundamental pro problem with this UI thread and a solution by using concurrent background threads. First, a look at an example. We have here an application and this application has three buttons, red, green and blue. And by clicking on one of the buttons, you change the color of the screen. So a click on a button is an event and the program reacts on this event by changing the color of the screen. More programs are also event-driven. All programs with a graphical user interface and other programs that get network input or sensor data like, like internet data, Bluetooth data and so on react upon these events by uh, executing reaction programs. Event-driven programming needs two things. First, an event queue and second, an event loop. In the event queue, you store the incoming events and, and in the event loop, you react on them. The event loop is an endless loop which waits until some event arrives, then it checks what type of event it is and reacts upon the event of this specific type. So we have a big switch case statement which has for each event type one case line. In Android, as in Java in general, this event queue is implemented by the runtime system together with the Delvic virtual machine and the operating system. These two manage the graphical user interface, sensors and so on. The structure of the event loop is also implemented by the runtime system. So you as the programmer have only to implement the reaction to individual events themselves. You know how to do this, you write listeners and connect them to elements of the graphical user interface, for example buttons or text fields and so on. So having a second look at the example we see that this example requires an event queue which stores events like red button clicked, blue button clicked, red button clicked again and which has an event loop checking which button has been clicked and painting the color of the screen correspondingly. Both of them are implemented by the Android runtime system. You as the programmer need only implement a listener. This listener takes the button which has been clicked as a parameter, checks which button it was and then correspondingly reacts by painting the screen in the corresponding color. In Android, there is basically one single thread which is responsible for this execution. Execution of event loop and the listeners. And this thread is called the main thread or also the UI thread. So the main thread always executes this endless loop by checking the events and executing listeners. There's a big problem when using this single thread. The problem is that event handling must not slow down the user interface thread. So events must be read quickly from the event queue and the user interface thread may only spend little time in executing the event handlers. In any case, it must not block in an event handler. If it does, the software would react to late, sensor and NATE network data would get lost and the graphical user interface might freeze. The solution to this problem is to do long event handling operations by background threads. So to handle an event, the user interface thread starts a special thread to handle this event and then immediately returns to the beginning of the loop reading the next event from the queue. So event handling is done by background threads 
completely concurrently, completely in parallel to the execution steps of the user interface thread. So what did we learn in this unit? We learned that modern software is event-driven, which refers especially to Android programs with their graphical user interfaces. To react upon events, like for example clicks on button, buttons, we have to have an event queue and an event loop. This queue and this loop are implemented by the Android runtime system so that you as the programmer have only to implement the listeners, the reactions to the event themselves. In the normal case, it is the UI thread which executes both event loop and the listeners. But if you have long-running listeners, listeners that need a long time to be executed, you should introduce separate background threads that execute these handlers. Thank you for your attention.